Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? We have the moon out of the way for a little while. Uh, it is going towards third phase and will be new. So we've got about 10 to 14 days where we can start looking for some really deep sky objects. Things that are dim, faint, and not always easy to see. Uh, and even if you have a larger telescope, you'll still want to use things like averted vision. So what should we look for? Well, this particular object I thought would be a fun one to kind of challenge us and to look for carefully. You might need to go to a dark sky site, bundle up, because I know it's cold for all of us here in the Northern Hemisphere. But this would be a good one for us to try for because it is in Orion and it's not hard to find at least from where the location is because we've got the belt stars right here you can start right here at Alm attack and if you use Sigma Orionis you can just create a line right through there and find this object so what is this well there's actually multiple things here the brightest one uh, that we would normally know about is M78 which was one of Messier's finds actually Pierre Machine found it uh, so M78 is this particular region of this you can see that in the size of that it is eight arc minutes by six arc minutes so not small but not too large either so you can use a little bit more um, magnification for it so there's eight minutes across there's about six minutes right there so approximately this area right in here is really what we call M78 uh, or NGC 2068. Now, like I said, there's more things actually happening in here. So what else is there? Well, there's also NGC 2067, which is this little region up here. I found that one a little hard to see. <laughs> there is also NGC 2064 which is this area just east of there. So, I mean, really, those are going to be difficult to distinguish. If you're seeing 2064 and 2068 together, that's totally okay. The other one that is definitely easier to tell that is different is NGC 2071, if I could actually type in correctly, is this one. And the reason why I like to start here is because there's two 10th magnitude stars right next to each other, and two of these are actually a double star. So I find these easiest to kind of try to look for first but you'll notice that they're kind of not really near any other bright stars so uh, we can estimate where it is now fortunately this is not too difficult to find even with the finder scope so let's bring up a finder scope starting at Alnatak so we'll bring up a finder here this is a correct image view so this is not reversed left to right or up and down this is what binoculars would show so here you can see the three belt stars like this. This is Sigma Orionis right here below Alnatak. And we're going to go in that direction. You can see actually where M78 is right there. So if we head in that direction, we notice that we're going to find like a seventh magnitude star over here. So we know that we're going the right way. What you can also see is usually these three stars right here. They kind of form what would almost be a square shape. You go, oh, you could fill in the square, maybe see where that's at. That's pretty close to where we want to go right there. So if we hit that, it actually hits a dark nebula when you try to do this on Stellarium. Uh, but that is approximately where M78 is going to be at. You can see when I type that in, M78. We're pretty much right there. So you can use these three stars to kind of help you um, finish that square off just a little bit. Just go a little outside of there and on this line. And you should be able to find that fairly easily. Now when you zoom in, uh, this particular star uh, might be in your field of view. And I found these ones easiest to see. I actually also found this particular part of the nebula the brightest. I had difficulty seeing this. This was uh, fainter. This had a little bit more nebulosity. I will grant you I did not spend too much time recently uh, looking at this because I only had uh, a short window to go and look at things. But I wanted to give uh, you also an idea of kind of what you might expect to see first. So the first thing that you're likely to see is probably the first thing that I uh, was able to see just without even really dark adapting and not taking too much time. So this one right here but do start to look again away from and back towards Alnatak to see if you can find where the M78 nebula is. Now 
I do want to point out, and I'm going to search for something that it may seem a little odd, but this is an actual star. So we're using the Henry Draper catalog, so HD, and it is 38563. So it's the star right here. Now if I take off the nebula button, you'll be able to see where that's at in, rel in relation to it. It's a 10th magnitude star. But that is the star that illuminates this whole thing because this is a reflection nebula. Unlike the Orion Nebula below Orion's belt, which is emission and uh, has excited gases that actually glow on their own, this uh, particular nebula is reflection. So it's just reflecting light from this particular star. And so everything that you see is that light bouncing off of that nebula and then coming back to us. Um, it's not too much further away than the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is about 1300 light years. This one's about 1600 light years. But because it's reflection, I'm going to guess and say that, yeah, that's why it's a little bit more difficult to see if we're just kind of relying on a couple stars. However, there are also stars forming in here. So very much like the Orion Nebula where there's star forming regions in there and stars actively forming, there's also stars actively forming in here. This is part of a larger group of stars called the Orion uh, OB um, moving group I believe is what uh, they call all of these stars that are in this general region of the sky because we're looking towards the Orion arm of our particular galaxy. So this is a very uh, active part of our galaxy uh, away from us, uh, opposite the center of the Milky Way, looking out towards the outer edges. Uh, but it's a very cool area to definitely take a look for and see if you can find this with a telescope. Obviously, the larger the aperture, the darker the skies that you're able to be under, the more you are likely to see. But give it time. Let your eyes fully dark adapt as much as possible. Block any extraneous light that you uh, have, may have around you. Do bundle up if you're cold. Uh, being warm is going to help you because if you are cold, then your blood vessels start to constrict and then you don't see quite as much as well. So uh, definitely dress for about 10, 20 degrees uh, warmer than you think you might need to uh, because just sitting there can uh, be cold. So do that and then look for Messier 78 and all these other NGC objects out here in this part of the uh, Orion constellation. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.